True indeed. A street Odyssey. True indeed. I think before we get into all of that, first of all, just the name Ox 2010 Street Odyssey. Let's go back to the Cannibal Ox legacy. Let's go back. Let's and how go that back. started. So talk about um the formation of Cannibal Ox, your role in it, and the overall scope in, in hip hop's vacuum of how that existed. Uh pretty much um, you know, um I was in high school. Um, and I, I met a, a crew of great talent, talented MCs. And um, one of the MCs that stuck out to me was my man Mega. And um, we just connected and vibed. I actually used to rhyme with his cousin a lot, like in school, you know, in, in the lunchroom and all that. And um, uh, his cousin actually lived in Brooklyn and I lived in Harlem. He lived in Harlem, so we started going home together. And that's the birth of Cannibal Ox right there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we have Ox 2010, A Street yes. Odyssey. And though it's a vast there solo project, yes. it still very much carries on the legacy of Cannibal Ox. True indeed. The group. True um, indeed. Going to why, that has to be a conscious decision. So going to the decision-making process of why. Well, maybe I'm that. well, you know, pretty much like that was me saying... I'm going to stand up for all the hard work I did into building up the name and building up what it represents. That's me just putting the flag in the moon. Plus, me and Vodou don't have no problems with each other. We're family. He's on the record. But, um, you know, I just wanted to make a stand in with that old name, you know, um, because it's powerful and it represents me. You know what I mean? And... When you see me, you see Cannibal Ox. You and know. Vaudel is on the project. Yes, definitely. Vaudel's been on every one of my records. And um, I, I always plan to make music with him whenever I can, whenever the, you know, the mood is right. Mm -hmm. We don't like to force nothing. You know what I mean? If he's in the mood, I'm in the mood, we're going to get it done. Because we've been rhyming together since we were kids. And it's simple to us. It's like simple, you know. Talk, talk about the record of Thor's Hammer, which features Raekwon and, of course... Yeah, for the Mega, Cannibal Ox, uh, a great record. Um, I love the fact that um, I was able to get up with a Wu-Tang legend. Capadonna's also on the record. Capadonna, amazing track. You know, everybody loves Cappuccino the Great, you know what I mean? Capadon Don, Poppy Wardrobe King, you know, the slang editorial, you know. He rapped on a joint called um, I Don't Care. And that's a classic joint. Um, I really love that track. It's a powerful track. And I had got that done. And then a little bit after that, we worked on Thor's Hammer. Okay. Will we ever get that second Cannibal Ox album? With me and Vaudel. With you and Vaudel? Through the whole record. Um, I would love that for the record. But it's on him. You got to interview him. <laughs> you got to find him. Peace to V Mega. I would love to do that, man. Um, it's all about timing. And it's all about the vibe. I don't want to force it because it's what people want. I want me and him to just be in the right place where, you know, if he, you know, because to be real, he kind of left the music world. It's a hobby instead of being a job. You, you see what I'm saying? It's not a career for him anymore. It's more of a hobby. It's got downplayed to like, I do that sometime. 
you know, and, um, you know, I don't blame him. He went through a lot in the industry. He, I'm, I'm, he's, he's a little burnt, you know what I mean? But um, he still loves rhyming. What, with everything that you went through with um, Def Jux and LP on the business side, what, what's the status of that relationship? Is it, is it completely dead? I mean, is there a way to repair it? Like, just what's the status of that? Well, basically, the status right now is pretty much let bygones be bygones. Let people live, let people move on. I really don't have any issues with them. I had issues with them. I'm not on the label no more. The label is actually done. And, um, you know, I did great music there. I don't, I, I'm not sitting up jaded or, you know what I mean? I moved on. Um, as far as personal relationships, we don't talk. Um, you know, none of us talk. So, you know, um, I don't see anything, you know, in the future through that, you know. Um, it was what it was for the time it was, and I'm glad I made the great things that I did with all of them. But right now in this future movement, you know, I don't see anything. And I, you're not going to see me bashing them or anything, you know. It's, everything is done, you know. So how do you, with, with everything that, that you've been through... Um, Label wise and business wise, I mean you're now with um, Man Bites Dog. Man Bites Dog, um, which is distributed through Fat Beats. Yes. Um, how do you end up with Man Bites Dog, and what about the the scenario that they have put in front of you makes it appealing to do business there? Well, pretty much, I've been working with them for a few years. I did, you know, they did a show with me on the Best Damn Rap Tour, things of that nature. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, we definitely worked on a few songs together with Sadat X and C Ray's Walls and a couple of other people. So um, that was the beginning of our relationship. And a few years down the line, it just worked out that um, the CEO, uh, Big RML, he just wanted to work with me. He just called me and was like, yo, you know, I'm digging your styles and I think, you know, we can make something you know, work well. And they already had peers on the label. They were already working with Killer Priest. Mm -hmm. They were already working with um, Copyright. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I called Copyright and was like, what's up with these dudes? You know, is everything cool? He gave them the thumbs up and it was downhill from there, mm -hmm. you know? That's what's up. You know, I, it's just good business, good ideas. Everybody putting their heads together, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. Um, what, in the end, in the grand scheme of things, because in its root, Ox 2010 is very much a street album. Yes. And, and you hear it. But it's not just being street for street sake. Mm. There's always thought behind everything that you've done. So at the end, what would you like the listener to take away from that album? Because it's not just thugging for the sake of pure thuggery. <laughs> you know what I mean? Thuggery. <laughs> um, basically, um... I guess I want the listener to take away the consistency. This is the album that's going to make you go, wow. Like, I fronted on him two years ago, but I'm not this year. You know what I mean? This is that album. Um, it's personal. It's retrospective. It's, it's you know, it's honest. Um, and it's spiritual. It's political. And it's street because I'm street. See, that's the thing. I want to show people that the street isn't as one-sided as they think it is. You know, piece of my man Jay Electronica, who comes from the same neighborhood that Little Wayne does. Okay? So, I'm the Jay Electronica of Uptown New York. You know what I mean? Like... You can't always make us all mace. Right. We're all piece to mace. There's no beef. Right, right. But everybody's got to play their role. You know what I mean? And I think um, I represent a certain side of New York that we're familiar with. You know what I mean? We, we you know, I'm, I'm from that cloth that gave you Mob Deep, Wu-Tang, EPMD, this is cutting edge music, but it's still gr grungy and, and raw and to the point.